After contacting my customer on this TCD V8, he informed me that it, the batteries didn't work. It only worked on AC power. That would have been a nice thing to know going in. So let's check into the input connector because there's a switch in there and it can sometimes give us trouble. So I'm back on this little DAT portable that uh, we couldn't get power to. Everything's pointing to the, the DC to DC converter, but the fellow that owns it, he said that it worked with uh, on power, just not on, or worked not on batteries, it worked on power. So he wanted me to try this and see if I apply power to it, which of course I'll have to actually connect it up at the power jack as I don't have an adapter. As odd as that, some of you might find that. I'm going to have people say, well, how can you not have a power adapter? Well, I don't have a power adapter. It's a special plug. So I'm just going to check the, uh, check this power uh, connector here. I was getting voltage on it, uh, going through it, but is there a connection problem in the internal switch? Because this could interrupt the power. And the way that I was, the readings I was getting was really quite weird, getting to this DC to DC converter. I'm curious as to whether there's a problem with this power jack. As I say, the fellow that owns it, after I chatted with him, said that it worked off of his adapter. It would have been nice if he had sent the adapter with it, but um, he didn't. So let's just see if there's, if we've got continuity through this switch here. Yeah, there's continuity on the switch there. And the center pin is that one, I believe. Yeah, that's that one's the center pin. And the outside is going to be I believe these ones here. This one's outside. But what about this one? I'm not so sure about that. Hmm. I'm curious as to whether these two outside pins also should be either connected to ground or connected to each other. When I'm measuring to see where what goes where, I've got um, continuity from the positive terminal over to here. Where am I here? Negative terminal is going through over to this one. I know that. And positive terminal is going through to this one here. I just measured it. Oh, there's a diode in line, that's why, I think. Yeah, there's a diode right here to protect it. I get the sneaking suspicion that there's supposed to be a switch right here, and this is what switches off. So I wonder if I put a jumper across here whether we can get some voltage because when I measure it you would normally expect to see the chassis grounded right we've got our positive but we don't have any ground the ground is open yet yet this screw is grounded We have no ground reference back to the negative terminal for the battery. I'm curious as to whether that switch is actually open. That could certainly cause me all kinds of weird problems. I'm just going to put a, a jumper in here momentarily. I'll just put a bit of bridge across here. This is a switch. Now, let's see whether, when I put the batteries in, whether anything different happens. I got power.
Well, that's better. Sounds like we've got a jammed mechanism. And that's what his complaint was, was the mechanism was jammed. Well, let's proceed. If I measure it now, I bet a ground goes. The, I bet you the ground lead goes right through to the chassis, which it does. So we had an open ground. That's odd that they're switching the ground on this, but that's what they do when you put when you plug it in. They disconnect the negative terminal. Uh, it's probably got to do with rechargeable batteries. I bet this thing can take rechargeable batteries, and will recharge them. You think? I don't know. I think it might take rechargeable battery, but that, that's got to be what that's for. When you plug it in, it disconnects it, and it's running a charge circuit here somehow to charge up batteries. I would think. Usually what sticks on this is this pivot right here. This, this bearing here where the, the, the guide post is uh, pivoting on. This is usually the one that gets gummed up on these ones. And we have to get some uh, cleaner into that and clean it up. In case you're wondering, that's just isopropanol alcohol that I'm using to uh, saturate the bearing and get the old lubricant softened up a bit. I generally try to do this without total disassembly of the mechanism because it's a lot of work to do a realignment on one of these once you start taking that mechanism apart. If you can free it up and lubricate it without taking all the pieces apart, you're much further ahead and you have a lot less work to do after the fact to get them operational again. Okay, I just put some alcohol down into there and I'm going to try and... I, I just freed the guide up because the guides were all stuck. I'm just getting some alcohol down into that. That bearing has uh, loosened them up a bit. Let's just see whether it will... I tell it that there's tape, tape in it, will it try to load? I gotta trip the, the catch so that it thinks that there's a tape in it. And if I press the buttons, will it attempt to load? Okay, now if I okay, so now at least it's trying to unload. I'm gonna try loading a tape. Push the tape all the way in, and then, and then trip this little lever. Will it think there's a? There we go. I'm gonna do something. We're going to pull the mechanism apart again. I'm going to run this through its operation by hand. So we're going to pull the board. Now that uh, at least I know I can get the unit to power up, let's uh, pull the mechanism apart again and check the uh, mechanics on it. I 
and I am using a different soldering iron right now. This is another one of the secure irons. I've got two of them, right? So this is the older one. This is the new one here. I'm using the older one right now, which uh, works quite nicely running it on a 24 volt power supply. So as many of you know, this mechanism is loaded and unloaded by the capstan motor. It is what controls the mechanism through this little cam gear over here. So if we, if we trip the cam gear, this will spin and it should load and unload the mechanism, which it is. If I'm turning it here, it's loading the mechanism now. Makes one revolution and then stops. So the mechanism is now loaded. You can see that the guides are already up in their full loaded position and if I flip this gear back again the other way and turn the capstan motor the opposite direction it will unload the mechanism so I turn it this way and you'll see the guides here will unload just like that now they get gummed up and that's the biggest problem with these mechanisms is that the mechanisms get gummed up. That's the biggest headache with these is these mechanisms. So what we need to do is we need to clean off this old grease that's in here and put some new grease in. And also I want to make sure that the uh, one of the, the guide pins doesn't come loose because some of them have been known for the, the actual pin to start pushing its way uh, through the uh, bottom of the guide and the guide can actually fall out. The other guide that I'm concerned about is this one that's on this side, which of course I can't see because it's it's underneath all this other crap. Although everything is moving very smoothly right now. And that's all because I was able to get some cleaner down into this pivot right here. Get some cleaner in there free up this guide this arm was frozen now everything is turning very smoothly so we got to get some lubricant in there I'm gonna get a drop of oil down in there and I try to do it without taking the guides apart because uh, the last thing you want to do is just start pulling these things apart another one that concerns me is, is this this part right down here where my finger is this guide here has a tendency to fall off that pin you can see it it almost looks like it's pushing its way down right it should be flush with here if you see this one but you look at this one here is down low so I want to try and push this guide back into place because that's part of the problem is it get jammed so I have to get this below and find it and push it through but the problem is it's under this little circuit board which makes accessing it very difficult I know with the light in the way here, it's going to be tough for you to see what I'm doing, but I'm using my dental pick to get under the guide so that I can get to the bottom of that pin and hold it in place so that I can then push the top guide piece back onto the pin. So I'm going to hold the pin up from below. The pin is what attaches the guide block to the movable arm. And when it gets a little bit of slack, the arm can slip off of the guide itself and actually be resting on the pin 
if you if you can follow what I'm getting at, maybe a, a little diagram might give you an idea of what we're working with here. So this is a kind of a crude drawing, but this is our guide pin looking like from down from the top. This is the, the pin that's recessed. Cross section, here's your guide post. This will be the base. There's a little protrusion that sticks out the bottom that the arm fits around and it's held in place by the base, this pin, or the, the, uh, the, the retainer pin. When the retainer pin pulls down a bit, this guide arm can drop out and now it's riding on the smaller diameter pin, which gives it some play and it can jam. And that's, I think what happened on this is this pin, or the retaining pin on the guide pulled down, allowed the retaining arm to drop out of position and it got jammed and then wouldn't retract the guides all the way. So the goal is to get the dental pick underneath here, hold this in place, this is my dental pick, and then we're going to push down on the top of the guide base to push this pin up so that it's flush and we'll hold this arm up against the bottom of the base. That's what we need to do. And it can be done without taking the mechanism apart and then we're going to put a bit of crazy glue on top here, fill that hole with crazy glue so the crazy glue will get down into the base and hold that pin so that it can't pull back down. That's the goal. I'm trying to get my hook underneath the guide so I can push the pin up and then push the guide flat onto it to uh, it's hard for you guys to see what I'm doing but if you look at the guide there I'm trying to get the pin I'm trying to get my dental tool underneath the guide so that I can hold it in place and push the top of it back down it's just hard to get at and have better luck with it more fully loaded it's just that there's not really a lot of room underneath the, under the guide to get into it. Without taking the whole mechanism apart, and that's something I want to try to avoid, is removing the whole mechanism just because it's, uh, it's a lot of work to put this thing back together. There, I reseated it. You see, it's now flush. This pin is now flush. So we need to secure that. I'm going to get a drop of crazy glue and just put a drop, like a smallest amount of glue onto these pins, crazy glue, just so that they won't back their way free again. Because I think that was part of the problem is it was it was jamming the uh, mechanism, plus the fact that it was gummed up. It's now nice and free. Everything's nice and free now. So I'm going to glue those in, get some, get some super glue, I'll put it on the end of a screwdriver just so that I can just put a tiniest little drop right on there just to secure that so that it doesn't back its way out again. And do the same on this one over here. No, no effort required at all for that mechanism now to load and unload. I'm now going to get some oil, just a drop of oil, clean off the 
tool that I used for putting the glue in place. I'm going to now put a drop. I'm just going to get a drop of oil and get it right into here. Okay, we'll get some super lube down onto the uh, rails here. I can either use super lube or molly coat. Both of them are, are equivalent. I'm getting low on molly, molly coat right now. Yeah, it's moving nice and smooth. All right, let's put the circuit board back in and see whether it will load a tape, and more importantly, will it play a tape? That's what, that's what the ultimate goal is here, is to get this so that it will play a tape.
I should point out I'm starting to like these secure irons more and more because I can shut them right off, let them cool down when I need them and pick them up, turn them on, and they're up to temperature within like 10 seconds. No more needing to leave the soldering iron running all day while I'm using it. Just turn it on when I need it and turn it off. That old Weller EC2000 is becoming less and less relevant. And to answer your question, what would I do if there was an electrical problem on one of these little DAT Walkmans? Well, I wouldn't be fixing it. Mechanical problems, that's one thing. But if we get into an electro electronic problem, then I'm not going to be the guy fixing it. Because I don't have the tools to work on it. I don't have the hot plate or anything to work on surface mounted. I don't have any surface data on it either. Generally, the electronics are pretty reliable on these. The problems we see repeatedly over and over again is mechanical problems. One thing you do want to do with any of these portable DAT machines is you want to use them on a regular basis because the worst thing for any of these mechanisms is sitting around doing nothing. That's when they get all gummed up. But there was that problem with the guide that came loose. That was a quite a common problem on all of these units. And when the guide works its way loose like that, well, they got to be serviced. This just reminded me my own TCD uh, D3 hasn't been used in a while. So I think I'll just turn it on and uh, we'll see if it plays the tape. There it is. Some music. Playing through some headphones. My old TCD D3 is still functional. And I say doing this reminded me that uh, I really needed to fire up my TCD D3. And for somebody who asked if this one in the prior video was the smallest the, uh, DAT Walkman that they made, the no, I think the D3 was a little open. bit smaller than this one. Observe what it's doing, if it's going to try to load a tape or not. We go, of course, we have to plug the front panel in or it won't uh, power up, right? Because the microcontroller is on this front display. So without the Without the front display actually connected to it, it won't do anything. Okay, batteries in the bottom here. Okay, will this load a tape? We gotta trip the, trip the little switch to make it think that it's closed. However, that works. We saw the mechanism load there, right? Got to lift it up, drop it back down, and there, tape loaded. See, tape loaded. All right, let's try this out and see if it'll play. Fingers crossed. It probably needs the tape path aligned. Those guides were kind of loose on it. Okay. Now. Are we getting anything showing up on the meters here? Yeah, they got something on them. Why do I not have any sound? Oh, wait a second. I guess I have to switch this to line out. Out. 
Ah, I might be plugged into the wrong uh, source on my amplifier. Let's try the correct one. All right, now let's try it. I have sound. And it sounds like it's working. I don't even have to do the alignment, even though these guides are not kind of well put loose. They're not turning on their own, but uh, This tape's got some damage. That's some damage going by the heads. There goes some more damage. This uh, tape's been chewed up a few times. So this is my uh, tape that I put into machines that might eat a tape. I think it's time that I put this together. Now I gotta stop it and eject it. There. I think it's time that this one went together because this one's pretty much done. One thing I do need to tighten up is there's little lock screws on the side of these guides that will stop them from turning. If I can get in here with my little tiny screwdriver should be able to give them a little bit of a turn just so that the guides themselves are not uh, going to wander. It's almost impossible to get a screwdriver in here. All right, we'll just uh, fish down the wire again for the display. There it goes. Pull it through. Put the screws back into the hole. The top in place. Like that. Almost there. I'll get a hold of the guy and find out whether he wants me to whether he wants to use this on batteries or not, because if he wants to use it on batteries, we'll have to leave that little switch jumpered. Otherwise, it's not going to work on batteries. But that was an interesting one. I can't say I haven't seen the switches like this fail before, just not in this type. And, of course, the, when I contacted him, I told him I had a problem with the DC to DC converter because it wasn't turned on. His reply back was, well, it, 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 I forgot to mention that it only works on the adapter. And, of course, I didn't get the adapter with it, so that was kind of a clue. When he said, well, it turned on with the, with the, with the adapter. It turned on. It just it wouldn't operate. It wouldn't uh, unload the tape. So I said, okay, well, we'll put it up on the bench again, and I'll try bypassing that switch. And with the switch bypassed... It uh, opens up. Oops.
what we have to determine is whether it is going to be uh, whether he's going to uh, have me leave it with that uh, short here across the switch so that it'll operate off batteries or whether he wants me to remove that short where it'll only operate off of his power adapter but I'll contact the owner of this and find out what he wants me to do and uh, we'll send it back the way he wants it but that's it for now this one here is pretty much done all I got to do now is just put the back on it but I'm going to contact the owner of this unit find out whether he wants me to leave the switch bypass so that he can use batteries and of course if he wants to use his adapter all he has to do is just pull the batteries out all right pull the battery pack out but uh, we'll, we'll leave it at this for now. I'll put it together after I hear back from the owner and find out what he wants to do. But here, there we go. We got it going. Now, just to be 100% crystal clear for those out there that have an opinion on this, like the guy that was jumping all over me for uh, cutting a hole in the bottom of a, uh, a receiver to access the transistors, about how he would be so pissed off. And why I didn't mention that I had spoken to the owner of it before. I've spoken to the owner on this. I'm adding this here. This video actually was completed. I just hadn't uploaded. I was waiting to, to uh, uh, confirm with the owner that it was okay to leave the jack bypassed. So he could use batteries. So now we can throw the unit together. Because uh, I heard back from him and he's okay with leaving it disconnected. Normally I wouldn't even bother. Normally I would just wouldn't even show this on the video because it's not really anybody's concern, but because somebody was so concerned that they had to take offense that I didn't uh, mention it on the video, I'm mentioning it now, just for those that are concerned. That before I do anything like this, I always let the person know exactly where they stand and what their options are. So I'll put the back cover on, it snaps into place. You gotta make sure that the switches line up it's in turn that one down there and make sure that this one's down as well cover screws go in and we'll give it one last test before packing it up ready for its trip back home okay the units back together the switches are functional let's uh, put some batteries in it and make sure that everything works now that it's together clean the connector a bit for watching.